slide number 112. We will also have to disconnect the escapement link, as shown here. The spring hook is by far the best tool to handle the clevises encountered on so many mechanisms in this electric typewriters. Slide number 113. In order to prevent the escapement link from losing its adjustment, in other words, to prevent the clevis on the escapement link from turning, it is advisable to connect the clevis to the tabulation cord, as shown here. It can happen quite easily that if a serviceman fails to do this, the escapement link is left hanging down under the operational shaft during reassembly. Usually, this is discovered after the operational shaft is again nicely in its position and properly adjusted. Let us simply say that it is quite cumbersome to remove the escapement link out of this situation without first removing the operational shaft. If you do not want to hook up the link with the tabulation cord, your best bet might be that of removing the link from the machine altogether. We will show you how to adjust the link when it comes to reinstalling it. Slide number 114. Now remove the shift ratchet and the shift spring as shown and leave them right on the shaft of the cycle wheel. Then loosen all of the indicated set screws. If you happen to be working with an 11 inch platen machine, you will not find the collar indicated by the blue pencil. When choosing the wrench for the set screws, we must make very sure to find the correct tool for the job, as the sockets in the set screws are not always the same. Choosing the wrong wrench, such as an Allen hex wrench instead of a Bristol wrench, will invariably cause problems such as stripping of the set screws or damaging of the wrenches. The torque limiter, indicated by the red pencil on the left, usually has two set screws rather than just one. When you loosen them, be sure to back them out far enough because they fit into a recess on the operational shaft. Once the collar on the right side of the shaft, pointed at by the blue pencil, is loose, it is possible, at least on the new machines, to move the operational shaft somewhat to the right, but not yet out of the machine. If you happen to be working on a level 1 machine, which is a really old machine, you will not be able to move the shaft to the right yet. Slide number 115. On level 1 torque limiter mechanisms, there is a second C-clip or retainer ring located on the operational shaft between the carrier return clutch driving arbor and the arbor of the carrier return pinion gear. To be able to see the point at which the two arbors come together, red pencil, it is necessary to spread the coils of the carrier return clutch spring, as we have done here with the aid of a screwdriver. In order to get at the keeper, we must first loosen the set screws of the torque limiter, indicated by the yellow pencil, then move the torque limiter and the carrier return driving arbor towards the left. Only then will we be able to see and to get at the second C-clip on the operational shaft. If you happen to be working with one of these old machines, take out the C-clip at this point. How do you know whether or not you have such a C-clip in your machine? Try pulling the operational shaft to the right while holding the carry return pinion to the left. If the operational shaft moves at all, you already have a later style and you do not have to worry about the second C-clip. And if you turn out to have one of these oldies, you may leave the C-clip out for good. It was placed there only in order to aid you with the adjustments. We will show you how to make the adjustment without using the extra C-clip. Thus, after you got it out, you may as well forget it. Slide number 116. Regardless of the level of the torque limiter of our machine, 
we need to be able to move the operational shaft sufficiently to the right in order to remove the indicated C-clip mounted on the operational shaft to the right of the carrier return pinion gear. This C-clip is a very important part of the operational shaft. It is the only part on the shaft which is not adjustable sideways unless we also move the operational shaft sideways. All other parts can be moved left or right at will because they are only fastened by set screws. The C-clip, however, fits into a groove on the operational shaft and that is the only groove there is for it. The job of the C-clip is to prevent the carrier return pinion located to the left of it from moving to the right. The carrier return pinion must be properly engaged with a tabulation cord drum as we asked you to check a little while earlier. This amounts to saying that during the reinstallation of the operational shaft we first position the carrier return pinion into the proper engagement with the tabulation cord drum and then we bring the operational shaft with its C-clip already installed against the carrier return pinion. The position of the operational shaft therefore is adjusted sideways so as to comply with the condition C-clip against the properly engaged carrier return pinion. The tabulation cord drum then is our fixed point or reference point for the adjustment of the left to right or right to left position of the operational shaft. Needless to say then that it is most important that the tabulation cord drum be positioned properly on its shaft called the escapement shaft. The position of the tabulation cord drum is a fundamental adjustment. Once it has been set, other parts are adjusted in relation to it. The position of the tab drum is just as important as the position of a hole in the power frame. Slide number 117. The tabulation cord drum should be positioned in such a manner that the inside surface of the drum is flush with the end of the escapement shaft. However, the escapement shaft must also be positioned and held all the way to the front of the machine with minimum end play before there is any point in adjusting the position of the tabulation drum. Slide number 118. The C-clip or keeper is simply pushed out with the aid of two screwdrivers as shown. When it comes off the shaft, be careful and prepared to have it jump, since it is quite strong. Because it will jump downwards, the danger of it hitting somebody's eyes is minimized. You should be very careful nevertheless. Slide number 119. Now pull out the operational shaft until you're able to remove the tabulation governor clutch, as illustrated here. A pair of long tweezers are a very handy tool for this job. Slide number 120. If your machine was properly taken care of before you got it, the clutch is completely dry without any grease nor oils. Let us examine this tabulation governor clutch for a moment. The hub in the left hand is really a combination collar and arbor. You know that it was fixed on the operational shaft by the set screw. This means that it must constantly turn top to the front with the rotation of the operational shaft. As you try to turn the collar arbor top to the front, you notice that the clutch spring offers very little or practically no resistance because this rotation without also turning the pinion in the right hand tends to expand the internal diameter of the spring thus disengaging the clutch. The indicated right end of the spring will be dragging on the arbor of the pinion thus causing diameter expansion. This expansion is only enough to overcome the friction of the spring on the pinion arbor. On the older machines, there is not even a clamp holding the left side of the clutch spring. 
Now, carefully, try it the other way around. Hold the left-hand collar, arbor, which IBM simply calls hub, and do not let it turn. Then cautiously try turning the tabulation pinion top to the front without forcing or damaging the spring. You now notice that the spring grips the collar arbor. In fact, if you are not careful, you will notice that the twisting force top to the front applied to the pinion will tend to suck a spring coil between the two arbors if you are not careful. This means that we have to install the pinion and the arbor in such a way as to allow for absolutely the minimum play between them for the sake of the spring. We do this by adjusting the position of the collar which is placed to the right of the tabulation pinion. From our observations we conclude that the tab governor clutch will close if the tabulation pinion turns top to the front while the hub or collar arbor remains stationary. The tabulation pinion gear through friction will drag the right end of the spring and thus attempt to close it around the pinion gear arbor. You have reached the end of side one of this audio tape. Please invert the position of the sound cassette so as to continue by playing cassette three, side two of this training segment number 1-5A.